Bon Jardin, everybody. I can still say Bon Jardin. I mean, it's noon, but you know, it's a little later than I had planned today, but somebody came to my door wanting to buy some cannoli and lucky for them, I just happened to have some. So I um, had to take care of that business first, you know? So anyway, so this is a great dish for a hot day or just an outdoor day. We are gonna, I'm kind of modified a little bit. You know, everybody, I'm sure you've heard of a panzanella salad, which is a cold salad, but it's got like bread cubes in it, soaked up with the all the goodies, you know, the dressing and everything, the oil and the vinegar. Um, and I know people have had a watermelon salad, and this is what inspired this today because I had a watermelon salad at my friend Gina's house last week, and it was really good. Now she did the traditional, I guess we'll say more Greek style one, even though we're Italian, you know. Um, I'm going to Italianize my watermelon salad today. We're gonna make a watermelon panzanella salad. So we've got some nice fresh watermelon. Look at these adorable little watermelons. I just got this from the farm down the street. So I cut one up already. And so I've got my watermelon right here, all cubed up in some nice, you know, bite-sized pieces. Uh, touched it, gotta eat it. So we're gonna start with this. I'm actually gonna put it on this bigger bowl because I don't wanna overflow. I started to do it in this smaller one. I'm like, nah, that's barely just, just big enough for the watermelon. What we're gonna put in here, I've got olives. Now, I'm not using feta. I'm using regular goat cheese. So I've got some nice crumbled goat cheese. So we're gonna use that. It's not quite as firm as feta. Feta's gonna hold its shape a little better, but I'm gonna throw in some of this. It's gonna make it a little creamy. And then I have some other cheese I just brought back from Italy. So we're gonna put some little cubes of that in there or some little something. Red onion and then tomatoes. Now normally a, a um, or I shouldn't say normally, most of the time, what we call in my town, in Roseto, we call it aquasale. So that's basically a panzanella salad. Aquasale means water and salt because it's like a, it's a wet flavored with salty salad. Okay, but I, um, I've got some tomatoes. Usually we put tomatoes and cucumbers. I don't have any cucumbers in the farm down the street, didn't have any, but I've got these just not quite fully ripe tomatoes, which a little lesson for you. In Italy, they often use what they call salad tomatoes. They are tomatoes that are not fully ripe, but for some reason in Italy, they're still really sweet. So these are just a little bit green on them and they're firm because what happens is they don't fall apart in the salad. So I got some little tomatoes. I got the firmest ones they had there at the farm. It was just a couple of them. The ones were either really ripe or green, green. So I got these medium ones here. So we're gonna use those. And then I don't usually, but just for the heck of it, they have these really pretty sweet Italian uh, peppers. So I might put a couple little stripes in there for some added different color. And <clears throat> if you wanna make it more salad-like, you can add, actually what's best is some arugula, just a little bit to put in there. But I have a little bit of romaine. Depending what it looks like, I might put a couple little <clears throat> skinny strips in there or whatever. And you know, celery is always good for flavor. So we're gonna play with this right now. And then we're gonna mix it all together with olive oil and vinegar, real simple, salt and pepper. So here we have our watermelon. So I'm gonna throw in some olives, get a spoon with holes in it so that I don't get all the, all the, the juice. Now you can, now these are already seeded, so you can throw them in whole or you can cut them in half. I'm gonna throw them in whole because I just did. I'm gonna put in eh, just two spoonfuls. So we got olives. We're gonna, I'm gonna throw the cheese in last. So right now I'm just gonna cut up. Now these tomatoes, you know, these are from a, an organic farm down the street. So they're not the most beautiful, but they are the most yummy. So I've got some nice firm tomato slices. I'm not gonna make them too big. And see, they're already orange and green kind of color. So they're going to contrast with the bright red of the, of the watermelon.
Just cutting off the few spots. Okay. Sometimes when they're green or they, you see a green spot on the inside and you think something's, you think it's actually like a black spot, but it's actually just green. <laughs> this one looks good. Nice. So again, these, you know, they use the firm, greeny, orangey tomatoes for salad oftentimes because they're not quite, I'm gonna save that one for later. I think that's good enough. Let's throw in a couple strips of this yellow pepper that looks so Oh, smells so good. And again, these are gonna be contrasting flavors. You've got the, the sweet of the watermelon, the medium of the tomato, the, the brine of the olives. I'm just gonna put some little strips of pepper in just because they look so good and I love peppers. I'm just gonna put some pieces of that in. And you know what, because I love green, we're gonna put some green in. Now you're thinking, I didn't use these whole peppers, but I will cut those up later and put them in a baggie and use them for breakfast tomorrow. So now we've got some green in here, so it's so pretty. Now we're gonna put in some red onion. Okay, doesn't wanna cut, there we go. <laughs> I hope you guys can see everything. Let's move that out of the way. All right. Wow, that had like a thick piece of something in the middle. Piece of stem almost. All right. I actually already peeled this. Well, a few minutes ago, I was like, why are my fingers purple? Because I, I peeled this so it would be quicker to do here for you guys. So I'm just gonna cut it once in half and I'm gonna cut thin, real thin, little thin strips in here. Because it looks pretty spread out in the salad. So see how it's like nice and thin? Oh, this is gonna be a gorgeous salad. This is gonna make for a nice side dish, a nice, it could actually make a whole nice lunch, with a nice piece of, well, actually I don't even need a crusty bread because it's gonna have some crusty bread in it. Okay, let's draw my little hands here. Do a little clean up. All right, now I'm gonna put in some goat cheese. Notice I haven't stirred up anything yet because I just kinda want these bigger chunks. There we go. And then last, just because I love it so much, I have a little bit of cavallo cheese that I just brought back from Italy. It was a big thing, but now I'm gonna move this over here so I got a drier spot on the um, cutting board. So I'm just gonna cut a couple pieces here. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut them in little strips or cubes or something. Actually, let's all right, so the ends are, you know, the ends of these cheeses are actually, some people think they're waxed and they're not. It's actually just brined. Oh, I cut pieces too big. Gotta eat it. Mm. I love that cheese. So, they're gonna be kind of medium sized cubes. I got them like little chunks. Actually, yeah, because I don't want them to get lost. Sometimes when things are too small in a salad, then they get they all get stuck on the bottom, you know? Yeah, let's throw one more piece. Not too thick. Okay. And then last but not least, I had some Italian rolls that were getting a little hard. So I went ahead and cubed them and threw them in the toaster oven. So they're nice and toasty. You don't have to toast them. And if you have a good crusty Italian bread, that's the best. Okay, let's get a big spoon. 
case I need two. Why not? Okay. Now, last but not least, we're going to dress it. So I got out some of my good, really good single estate first cold pressed tre olive. This is such a good olive oil. Mmm, you can smell it. Okay, got some oil in there. We're not going to use a whole lot, but we're going to put in some vinegar. Now, this watermelon was sweet. Not as sweet as the one I just had in Italy, but... Mmm, I love that cheese. You can use regular or an option... If your fruit, I have some, if your fruit's not as sweet as you want it to be, I have some organic, very yummy raspberry vinegar. I'm gonna decide. Hmm, that smells really sweet. And of course that smells like red wine vinegar. Hmm, what should we do? Red wine vinegar or raspberry wine vinegar? Let's do a little, let's do just a little teeny bit of the raspberry. We're just doing one little, we're just going to put a little bit in. It'll help sweeten it up. Okay, got to be careful. This doesn't have a pourer thingy on it. Oh, it's pretty in red. So that's raspberry. <laughs> Oops. You didn't see that. salt and pepper it yet. I'm going to get a fork and we're going to taste it. Okay, so no salt and pepper yet. We're just going to do this. Oh, you know what? I had to get some mint and some basil. Well, the basil was right here, but now I'm going to... Mint is a, such a key ingredient. So I'm cutting up some mint and some basil. Amazing how just a little, you don't really want to overdo it. There's literally two little sprigs of mint and about four basil leaves. It does make it pretty. And now what's gonna happen now is we're gonna mix this up and we're gonna let it sit for a good little while. The longer it sits, the more flavors. I'm gonna throw in just a little bit more oil. Just a smidge of the vinegar. Just want it to be a little bit more, a little bit more wet. Now, unlike the one with the feta cheese, this watermelon has a creaminess to it because of the goat cheese, which is softer. Oh my goodness. Let's try one of these pieces of bread. Mmm. Like I said, you don't have to toast it, but I love toasting it. And if you want, when you go to serve it, you can sprinkle the goat cheese on top, or you don't have to mix it in. You can sprinkle it on top of the dish once it's sat here. But honestly, come on, tell me it doesn't look yummy. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? You've got onion, you've got pepper, you've got piece of, whoop, well, a piece of tomato just fell. Watermelon, cheese, bread. That's a whole meal and a bite. Oops, I forgot the olive. There's the olives. You know, I could probably throw a few more olives in here. And like I said, if you want to, <laughs> oops, if you want to add lettuce, if you want to add some arugula, you want something else more green, by all means, there's no rules to these kinds of salads. What these are is suggestions and ideas, you know? Think of what looks good in here. I actually have some peaches and I almost considered throwing some peach in here too. That would have been nice. But again, I already got the watermelon. I've got my sweet fruit, so I'm happy with this. 
So I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope you try it this weekend because it is the perfect weekend to try a nice watermelon panzanella aqua sale con anguria. And if you have cucumbers, put cucumbers in because they just really, they're really good in here. Um, but in the meantime, um, please do me a kind favor. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Doreenus Kitchen. Also, please, if you're not already a liked fan on here, please um, like my page, like this post. Please, please leave me a comment. I like comments. I met some people this past week and said, I watch you. I'm like, what's your name? I'm like, I pay attention to the names that comment on my stuff. So, you know, if once you start commenting and we start having a discourse back and forth, we become more friends. So come on, don't you want to be my friend? <laughs> I'm always looking for more friends. Um, who doesn't need friends? So please say hello to me. Tell me where you're from. Tell me if you like this or don't like this. No, don't tell me if you don't like it. I don't want to know. Just tell me if you like it. <laughs> I'll cry. <laughs> so anyway, actually I cry when people write nice things too. So that's kind of, oh, well, I'm screwed no matter what. But anyway, um, so please, um, you know, like, follow, subscribe, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, please share it. I'm trying to reach 10,000 followers on Facebook. So please help me do that. Cause the bigger the page gets, the more we get the word out about the back to the table movement. Things like this will definitely bring the kids to the table. You want them to eat a salad? Throw some fruit in it and some crunchy bread. Who doesn't like that? All kids like fruit and crunchy bread. So just saying, you just call them, tell them they're croutons if they're little, you know, American kids and they don't know what a aqua sale is or all that kind of stuff. Say, oh, I've got a fruit salad with croutons. Yes, let's eat it. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, um, I hope you enjoy it. Listen, really quick. So somebody was telling me how their family has a crazy work schedule. Somebody I met this weekend and, um, and so they don't get to eat together because the husband goes to work. He works the night shift. So he goes to work at like, you know, two or three o'clock in the afternoon till the overnight. So they don't get to have dinner together. So if you have crazy schedules, make dinner at a different time. So this family just so happened had really young kids. So those kids are still home. Have dinner at midday. Have your dinner at lunchtime the way they do in Europe. Have that be your main meal. Sit down at the table. Just when you're making breakfast, start dinner. Make that. And then in the evening, if you're stuck home, I don't want to say stuck home. That's the wrong word. But if you are home without your husband or vice versa um, with the kids in the evening, then you just have a light meal with the kids, but you still eat at the table. And, you know, but you have that meal with as many people as you can at whatever time you can. And if you need to make breakfast your big family meal, then get up half an hour earlier and make a big breakfast and start your day that way. Whatever you have to do to come together at the table. But midday meal really works. And once the kids are in school, you know what? Have a meal with your husband if he's gonna be home for lunch and the kids aren't or whatever, but have a meal with him and then have a meal with the kids and make breakfast the whole family time. So there's always a way. And if you need help figuring it out, just send me a message and I'll help you, okay? Love you and hope you have a wonderful weekend. Ciao, everybody.